Hello everyone, this is Cameron McKenzie, Application Engineer here at Man Machine. Today we're going to be looking at the new automated modeling tool that's been released inside of Fusion 360. This has been released as part of the July 2022 update. Um, and today we're just going to have a look at how we can access and start to use this really instrumental tool. Um, yeah, great release from Fusion 360. I think this is going to help a lot of people um, in the entire design process. So um, if you don't already have it um, activated, the quickest way to actually activate this tool will be inside of your preferences. It is still in preview. Um, but it is out for public preview as part of this particular update. So what we're going to do is just go to the top right where we've got our user profile, single left click on there. We've got the ability to activate our custom preferences inside of preferences. It'll take a little while to load up, um, but we've got different ways of, of um, configuring our environment right at the bottom of our preferences window we've got the ability to access preview features. Um, and inside of our preview features, inside of the design section, we've now got a automated modeling button. So if you just toggle that on, um, automated modeling will then become available to you inside of the design workspace. This may require you to restart Fusion, um, but once it's activated, we've got the ability to use it from inside here. While we're in here, there are a lot of preview features that are available. This is currently on the 19th of July. These are the ones that are available to me at the moment, uh, but you've got a lot of other options available and they're continually updating this page. So if you ever are wanting to preview some features inside of Fusion, feel free to uh, check this out. Obviously, uh, with them being previewed, they aren't always the most stable. So if if you are wanting to prioritize stability of your build, try not to um, activate too many or any. Um, but if you're happy to, um, yeah, test out some some new features, new previews, we've got the ability to activate that from inside of this preview section inside of our preferences window. Um, as you can see, mine is already active, so I don't need to change anything. I'll just hit OK on here um, and take us straight into the environment. Essentially, the automate feature is going to allow us, or automated modeling rather, um, is going to allow us to very quickly create geometry inside of our environment. So if you are wanting to connect parts together or faces together um, and don't want to have to model the geometry between faces, this is going to come up with a very nice organic looking part um, and just very quickly connect two faces together. The main technology behind this is coming from generative design. Um, they are different in, in the ways that we create the models and the models that are created from that, but it is still using the same technology in the way that it generates a, a piece of material um, between components. The, the main difference really is it's not taking into consideration materials, um, so therefore we can't apply loads and constraints to it. Um, it is just going to generate 3D geometry between two areas and not take into consideration different loads and constraints um, and different material properties. It's just going to be creating the shape between them. If you wanted to then run further studies on top of that particular item, you could always take this new part, this new um, model and push it into a simulation environment. So with that out the way, we can get straight into creating a automated model. So same process as we would usually do within our modeling environment or our design environment, we want to start with a 2D sketch. So if I start my 2D sketch over here, selecting create sketch, I'm just going to select the back plane or the front back plane, which in my model is the XY plane. And I'm just going to create two shapes that I want to um, be connected with my geometry. Um, I'm going to make this as simple as I can. So I'm just going to create a circle off on the left hand side here and another one off to the right hand side. I'm going to ensure that they are symmetric about the origin axes. So I'm going to come down and say that I want this to be at 60 and the same for this one at 60. I'm just going to reference the other dimension for that. 
and I'm going to ensure that they are both at the same height as each other using my constraints and I'm going to finally add in a dimension from the origin point to where these guys are currently set which is about 80 millimeters so I'm just going to round that up to 80 millimeters last thing I want to do is just add some dimensions on the circles themselves make this one let's go for 25 and do the same on the other one so you don't have to have these dimensioned I just prefer having them dimensioned um, just to make sure that they are nice and symmetrical in this case so I'm going to hit finish sketch on them and I'm going to extrude these two shapes out using my extrude tool select both profiles I'm going to go symmetric on here as well nice and symmetric in both placement and shape 50 millimeters I'm not too bothered necessarily about the exact size of this so I'm just going to accept that 50 millimeter extrusion symmetric about the sketch and then one more sketch just for the fun of it on the ground plane about the origin and I have the origins visibility turned off but I'm just going to eyeball it for now make this one 25 as well actually let's make it 50 50 should be fine and I'm just going to ensure that I have a coincident constraint between the center point of the circle and the origin point itself hit finish sketch extrude this out x amount again not going to be worried about that too much and happy with that so we've got two cylinders and on the side two smaller cylinders on the side and one larger cylinder in the middle um, and we just want to be able to connect these now with that um, what I will do as well is actually I'm going to want these two connected doesn't matter I'm just thinking out loud here uh, as to what I want to create from here so using our automated modeling so you can see the same process in constructing um, our geometry to get started we then want to then add a secondary feature essentially for the automated modeling so I come into automated modeling directly from here in my new automate panel and the windows has gone off screen so let me bring it on here very quickly and you can see we've got we want to choose faces to connect so I want to connect this face to this face and I've also got the ability to avoid bodies so very similar to um, generative design we've got the ability to create faces that we want to join where we usually add loads to one or the other um, and then we've also got bodies that we want to avoid so we can select this and it turns the body that we want to avoid red and all of the faces that we want to connect it turns blue as soon as we're happy with our selection we can then choose what type of operation we want whether this new item is going to become a new body or whether it's going to become a new component as soon as we're happy with that we can hit generate shapes and this will go off and think about this for a few minutes or a few seconds to minutes um, and just slowly run through various iterations of the bodies that could be generated between these those of you that are familiar with generative design you'll know that you'd have to go and uh, create a study for it and send it off to the cloud to do the cloud computing there's a similar process that's going on um, on these ones but what it is giving us in this time um, is it's going to be giving us six alternative versions of the eventual product and if you have a look on closer inspection it breaks those six down into two groups so we've got group one which makes up alternative one two and three which are going to be the smooth connections so this is going to make a smooth connection point between the surface that we've chosen and the body that we're going to be generating in this case group two which will be alternative four to six are going to have sharp connection points so if i hover over here you'll see the little icon that that shows a little difference it's a little blue icon um, on the on the little glyph over there um, and that's going to give us a sharper connection point between the items you'll see it gives a bit of a preview beforehand um, as to how it's it's iterating through the different versions of that particular um, shape but you can see very quickly it's, it's generating those in our model space as well so we get a bit of a preview in the window over here um, but at the same time um, we can come in and, and select any one of those and you'll notice that the the shapes will be fairly similar between them so um, alternative one is going to be the smooth connector 
or smooth connection to the, the part. Um, alternative four will have a similar shape, except it's going to prioritize a sharper connection between our faces. So if I, if I flick between those two, you can see one is smoother and one is sharper. And same with alternative two will be quite similar to alternative five. The only difference again, alternative two is smoother. Alternative five is sharper. And then same with three and six. So you can see we've got various options that we can choose from inside here. And once we're happy with the shape, we can then choose the item um, and actually create this now as our new feature. So I quite like the look of um, alternative six. It's got the sharper edges that I want and it's sort of rounded around the actual um, component that I wanted to avoid. So that's perfect. I'm going to now hit OK to confirm. Uh, it then chooses this particular item um, and creates the model for me. You can see it's created a few um, construction um, faces or construction planes rather um, in between the item and these are the I these are the uh, generally the the planes that our item is symmetric about um, what you'll notice is on our timeline over here we now have a automated modeling feature that's been added as well as the various um, features that make up this particular component and here at the end of it it's combined all of those together if I expand this out um, or collapse it rather you can see it, it collapses it all into one um, Automated modeling feature on our timeline if I expand that you can see it, it's made up of various individual items What's great with this is it's now allowed us to um, it's actually created a t-spline model of the item itself um, if, you, if you're familiar with generative design you often be exporting a mesh instead um, but from within the automated modeling, we've got the ability to create an organic T-spline model from this. And with it being an organic T-spline modeling model, we can come in and actually edit that particular feature. So if I come in, right click and edit on the feature in here, you'll notice that we've now got the ability to go straight into our form modeling and be able to make tweaks to this component if we wanted to. So say, for example, we want those limbs to be a little bit thicker um, just to add a bit more strength to the component. We've got the ability to do so now. What you will also notice is, again, because it's symmetric, we've now got the ability to make use of the symmetric constraints inside of form modeling. Uh, so if we do any alterations to one side of the component, it then happens on the other side. And because this is symmetric about two axes, um, we'll now be able to select a component on one side and make the tweaks to it. And you can see it's how it's happening on three other portions of the model itself. So if we wanted to um, scale the, um, the rings around this part, make it that little bit thicker in there, let me change the, uh, the vertexes that I've got available to me, um, and just scale that entire component. I've got the ability to do so right from the modeling process over here. So uh, all I have to do is, is make those this minor tweaks to it. I can come in and move using my translation tools, move that little component a little bit further out um, and, and smooth it out from there. And again, it's gonna be doing the same thing on the opposite side. Um, yeah, so great functionality that we've now got the ability to make the tweaks that we want to, to our particular component. Maybe I've moved that out a little bit too far, but you get the idea. We've got the ability to come in and tweak in the, any of the individual nodes, um, edges or faces of this form model. Again, as soon as we're happy with it, we can hit finish form or OK on here to close that off and then finish form either way around. Um, and now we've got that model directly inside of our part. So, yeah, I hope that's been helpful for you. Taking a, a little bit of a deeper dive than I expected to on this one. But, yeah, great to have a, a nice new tool to play around with inside of Fusion. Um, and I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people, uh, at least in the prototyping phase of, of items. We can then, as I said, take this body that we've created and run individual studies on it, make it thicker, make it thinner, um, and be able to, to run it through that way around. What is important to know is, is this won't take any cloud credits. So um, where with the generative design, you'd be using cloud credits to generate an object because it is running individual um, studies on it for stresses and strains. 
uh, on, on the model itself. This one's great where it doesn't require the cloud credits, at least currently, but I'm, it seems as if uh, Fusion are wanting to keep this one as, as a new tool to be able to use inside of the, uh, the design environment. So yep, just a very quick one, hopefully. Uh, if you enjoyed that, uh, please give us a like. Drop a comment if you would like to see anything else uh, from inside of the July update. We are going to be running a few other videos for this. Um, if there's anything else that stood out for you, if you've had a play around, please give us a shout. Um, we can make a video about that. Other than that, thank you for your time. Have a great day further. Goodbye.